back to the 10th episode of Feng Shui Talks. I'm super excited today because we're going to be talking all about healing beauty rituals with Spiral Beauty. This is Jess from Spiral Beauty. So we're going to have Jess Squared on today's episode and I'm super excited to have her. She is absolutely sweet, um, so intuitive, very spiritual and very intentional with I want to say with life, with actions, and you can tell by the posts that she makes. I'm, I see her here, so I'm just gonna wait for her to join in. Oh, so I'm happy to see you. And there may be a way that I can make the request to you. I've seen this happen recently, so there could have been, there could even have been a change. Oh, perfect! I see you're jumping right on. Go live. So if you have any questions on how to feel empowered through a beauty ritual, if you're curious to what a beauty ritual is, hi, Jess. Hey, I love that you said Jess squared. It's so yeah. true. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, your name's not in the handle, and it's it's like through a process of me even getting to know you, it's like we're both Jess, <laughs> which yeah. is so cool. I know, even doing my... um my story yesterday. I was like, oh yeah, come and hang out with Jess. I'm like, oh yeah, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. It works on both accounts. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling today? I'm doing really, really well. Um, I woke up with a really grateful heart, um, had a beautiful new moon yesterday and kind of still flowing with those vibes. So it's um, been really wonderful. I, I kind of had inspiration for the, the conversation we're going to have today and had a beautiful, luxurious bath last night with some lovely herbs and some candles. And it was just so luxurious and divine. And, and it was just really lovely. That's so beautiful. I'm a big bath person myself, so I can definitely appreciate that. Oh, it's so beautiful and healing. How are you doing today? Good. Yeah, I did some rituals as well. I did the ritual that I posted yesterday and I did that with my partner. And it was really, it was quite a beautiful release. Um, yeah. like I said to you, I was actually going to like reorganize my altar. I didn't get to yeah. that yet because I just had so mm -hmm. much <laughs> to yeah. write out. And I figured since I'm chatting with you today, maybe we could then later discuss like altar ideas or things oh. to be doing for this moon, like your expertise. So I'd love, oh. I felt like that was why I had to wait as well. <laughs> Absolutely. And too, like, it's interesting because whenever there's a full moon and new moon, and, and I'm sure you're aware of this, the energy is more like spread out it's not necessarily just that day so yeah. we've got this huge opportunity to really like roll with the the energy and embrace the change and what's being asked of us at that time yeah exactly yeah the past few days it's just been like this for me so just like yeah. really tapping into the flows of when I feel like doing certain things and absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> oh, I love that so much so we're going to talk all about healing beauty rituals, and I was really inspired to invite you on Feng Shui Talks because last week I, I did like a beauty tutorial, a makeup tutorial, and it was just me putting on makeup. <laughs> I'm just like going with it, feeling the flow. Uh, I thought it was really, actually, I've developed my own kind of ritualistic type practice where I'm putting makeup on and it's really just this time of self-love self-care paying attention to what I'm feeling at the time and also uh, it's a source of expression a creative expression so when I was in that flow I was like you know what Jess would be the the perfect go-to to really explore this topic in like 30 minutes um, so it's like a really brief a brief time but just to learn more about yourself spiral beauty um and the you know the the how what's and why's i guess of, of developing cultivating a beauty practice or ritual yeah i love that video that you posted it, mm -hmm. it was it really spoke to me and my my ritual practices too because anything can be ritual um yeah. it nothing has to be ritual if you don't want it to do to be but life can be ritual too so that's why i wanted to create spiral beauty is to merge in my experience with being a makeup artist since 2012 and also that i grew up in australia and really influenced by um asian culture too so my mm -hmm. family would naturally go out and seek uh, preventative alternative modalities 
before going to conventional um, medicine practices. So for me, spiral beauty is all about like that merging aspect and bringing in that ritual. So what you do um, as far as like your self-care practices and what you're doing with your skincare, just paying attention to the grounding parts of it as well. So like what is the temperature of your hands when you're yeah. potting? Um, being really mindful of it too. So like what, what is your, your current practice? And maybe I can speak to like little tidbits. Yeah, my, my current practice, yeah. ooh, I, I am like a shower every morning type gal. And it's like this morning, I didn't use shampoo or anything. I didn't need it. But it's this practice that I've been cultivating, I guess, of really going in and that renewal. And I just absolutely mm -hmm. love water. I'm really drawn to it and <laughs> frequent the beach as much as we feel called. But we were at the, the beach yesterday morning and I shared a little bit of that in my stories just to really find it's just such a beautiful moment when you're in water for flowing, like with our emotions, with whatever's going on. It's a beautiful opportunity to release any excess energy, emotions, again, going through change or shifts like the moons uh, during the full moon and new moon. It's a perfect opportunity for that. So I have a shower in the morning and then I start taking care of like, I don't know, my hair, I guess, first. Um, and then I start now, and this is just recent that I started to apply makeup. And I want to say recent because for the longest time, I was really timid of using makeup. I didn't know how to apply it <laughs> or just didn't feel confident in applying it. And then also understanding the product and where it comes from and kind of like the natural beauty side of things because I don't want to have too much on, but having some on, it feels really good. And it feels really good to me right now. It helps to elevate my own like personal energy throughout the day. So it's uh, really exciting. That's, that's pretty much the gist of it. Sometimes I'll use lotion, not always. Um, I'm trying to think, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I do have a dry brush. Oh, and, I love <laughs> oh my gosh. And I just, yesterday, my, like my adrenal system just felt so clogged. It's just this feeling of like, I needed to move. And so I used the dry brush before going in the bath. And I found like that was just like in totally invigorating and just like woke up my entire body and my skin. It was really quite lovely. So good for your lymphatic system also yeah. like energetically too, just aliving your cells and everything. Right. And yeah, I, that sounds like a beautiful practice. And you're, you don't have to have a, like regimen or regime that you do and just really being more intuitive and feminine with your flow and your practices and going back to being conscious of the products that you use so i'm a really big green beauty advocate yeah. but there are there's duality in everything and right. there's positive sides and negative sides to even the green beauty industry and the negative aspect that i see is just like conventional um product marketing which is going through a to add it with a fear-based mindset so um really targeting people it's like okay so i want to get rid of my wrinkles but now i also want my products to be toxic and it's that fear marketing um so i like to flip the script on it and pay attention more to the energetics and yeah. even if you're using something that is conventional that's okay too right. it's it's your intention because yeah. ritual is all about your intention and intention setting so setting that intention first and paying attention to your why um and you don't have to think so deep i'm just a deep thinker <laughs> yeah same here <laughs> <laughs> and if you're a deep thinker i think your intention is to mostly um pay attention to the holistic approaches yeah. to everything that you do um but not leave that to exhaustion as well so if you want to wear that waterproof mascara that's okay right. but um for me personally like i've i've worked as a makeup mar makeup artist for mac cosmetics years ago yeah. and I was definitely the most like natural um, styled makeup artist then, but I, I still, I, I reach for products yeah. and I think that ultimately you know what's best for you right. and you know what decisions are best to make. Yeah. But I do love to support uh, small businesses, indie businesses, businesses that are really intentional about the vibrational energy um, that they're putting into their products and working with that because I generally feel better myself, my hormones mm -hmm. like me better for that. Yeah. <laughs> 
And I feel like you just glow differently as well yeah. when you um, feel really good, no matter what that looks like for you, whether that's wearing makeup or not. So, yeah. Laura uh, Somerville, yeah, literally just had all these conversations. That's amazing. I, I simply yeah. adore Miss Somerville 876. And uh, she's gotten me into uh, Melaleuca and the uh-huh. Sabella Cosmic Line. Oh, and I've just like, I've fallen in love. And I think it's because, yeah, of the, the energetics behind. It's all about that glow. Exactly. It's about the, the purpose, the intention behind it, the experience even of like purchasing your items. And then the, the I don't want to say the story, but it's the energy and the, the energetics behind that and that vibration. Yeah. And to kind of just take that time for self-care because, you know, um, conventional and back in the day it was you know remove your makeup wash your face go no now it's being really intentional with this beautiful high vibrational products that you're putting on leave your cleanser on for a minute let it the nutrients really soak into your skin like feel the temperature of your your fingers take a breath like make this your moment um if you want it to be you have that time and space for yourself because your time in the bathroom is really being a mother for you especially yeah. the only times you get alone and so sometimes like, even <laughs> and maybe not even then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but to really um, honor those moments of being in your own space and your own energy, because that's where we can really shed um, energies yeah. that we do absorb. And it's yeah. this holistic approach. It's really being paying attention to it all. Oh, Absolutely. I love, I love divine oh. um, conversations. Hey, Devin. Absolutely. Oh, and it's so beautiful. Comments, too, if you want to bring in. Yes. Yeah. But what products you use, um, your rituals that you use, or if you want to start implementing rituals and you have any questions about your routines, um, to go over like the fundamentals of what a ritual is too. You, um, it, it, it can be whatever you want it to be, but basically the foundation is to first cleanse. So mm-hmm. I, uh, this can be a physical cleansing, like having a shower or a bath, like you said, and that also energetically cleanses you too with the with the water element, like you were saying. Um, yeah, listening to ocean waves crashing, that's healing and cleansing. Or physically washing your body, that's energetically cleansing too. Uh, so really focusing on the cleansing element is the first piece of ritual, and then tapping more into the intention setting. So when I'm applying my product, what is the intention I'm setting for this product to even be yeah. doing in the first place? Um, because that's, that's huge. And being really mindful of that and the intention as to like, what products am I purchasing and why, um, mm. whatever your answers are, are valid and true and real. So don't feel guilty if right. you're wearing something conventional and feeling awful because it's how you feel about it. Uh, your feelings are so powerful. And then, yeah, the application of like applying your products, doing the ritual aspect um, so that can be like releasing, it could be calling in. So when you're applying skincare, makeup, you're really calling into the aspects of how you want to be feeling in this moment. And that's why I think skincare and makeup can be really powerful tools for us because we can call in how we wish to be feeling this day. And to be honest, the past two years, especially for me, have been a time of not, not wearing makeup. Mm-hmm. Um, but I choose to when I want to wear it and I feel very empowered when I wear it as opposed yeah. to feeling I have to be wearing it kind of thing. Totally. So there's that, and then um, then you close it off with um, just uh, in terms of skincare and makeup, you close it off. But in other rituals, you know, yeah. like rings and stuff. <laughs> the energetics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So does that speak to you too in your practices? It definitely does, absolutely. And you know, I was thinking of the the practice at bedtime as well like applying makeup during the morning um or even just a skincare product i'm still looking for like a the perfect skin moisturizing product <laughs> so if you have any suggestions we can always chat about that later <laughs> yeah definitely um to speak to more general products i'm a yeah. huge advocate of um okay let me backtrack here yeah <laughs> I wanted to bring up today and this is also the fact that green beauty clean beauty has to be expensive or um really hard to source it doesn't have to be hard to source now of course i i personally like to 
to support small business owners, indie brand owners. But if you're in a pinch, you can go to the drugstore. You can pick up like a $14 jojoba oil, golden jojoba oil, which is gorgeous. And you can use that for everything. You can use that to Absolutely. cleanse your makeup, remove any, any makeup whatsoever. You can use it yeah. to moisturize. You can use it in your hair, in your body. There's no scent. And like it can be accessible, but not everybody knows these tools. And it's shifting your mindset as to how you approach. Right beauty and having awareness and knowledge too. I love that because I actually like two weeks ago picked up jojoba oil for the first time and I have the bottle yeah. just sitting in my bathroom mm. <laughs> unopened and like yeah I'm like exactly and I'm like perfect now I've got a purpose <laughs> for this. No I, I did intentionally pick it up to make um, spray for, for tick season with essential oils so <laughs> I love jojoba oil. All I use. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, years ago, I used to use coconut oil. And then and I, I had great results. Like I didn't have any issues with that at all. Um, but I've heard that there's a difference between coconut oil and, and these other types of oils that may be more beneficial for skin. Yeah. 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 So um, I, I worked at the, the detox market in Toronto for a while. I helped them okay. after working at Mac, I helped them kind of create the same kind of makeup system. So I learned a lot right. working one-on-one -on -one with different skin types in the holistic beauty industry. And a lot of people who have acneic skin or uh, congested mm -hmm. skin are just like, can't do dairy, yeah. can't do coconut oil. Yeah. Um, and there are some high, high, high quality coconut oils like RMS Beauty has a really good one that people can use but to be really conscious of the quality of coconut oil if you're using it um yeah. some skins love it and that's cool use it okay. if it works. but it's a really thick heavy it is rose hips beautiful film i love rose, rose hip. it's that so nourishing i love rose hip um wow. and then for for jojoba what i like about it is because rose hip is a little bit richer fatter um great okay. for like normal to dry skin types. What I like about jojoba oil is it's lightweight. It's closest to your skin's right. natural sebum. It's actually a wax, not even an oil. Um, there, okay. There's like a few people I've talked to who are like, I can't do it. And if so, you can use like an apricot oil. Um, but jojoba is just a really great general um, oil that you can use for everything, literally everything. I should be selling it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Oh, oh it's so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> <We're back. laughs> uh -huh. that's so beautiful and that's yeah. really great to know so thank you so much for sharing the benefits of jojoba oil because I think like you said it's accessible too and it's natural and it's it's great for skin care so that's uh, thank you so much um we were I was briefly touching in the the concept of nighttime because we talked about the morning yeah. and you know cleansing and setting up a healing beauty ritual practice but also like before going to bed now this is something again like within the past month or two months that I've been starting to develop it's this like nighttime practice because my entire life I were since I've ever worn makeup or really thought about things has been I I would go to bed with my makeup on I wouldn't even wash it off and then I'd wake up and, you know, it'd be smeared a little bit, but I, I was normal or was not normal for me. And, um, but recently I've started to actually use a cleanser to wash my face before bed. And I'm finding like, I wake up in the morning and my skin looks young. It looks healthy and vibrant. And it's, I look younger in the morning. And it's, I, I assume it's because I'm you know, cleansing off the makeup that maybe oh, was dehydrating my skin. It wasn't really the highest quality at the time. I've since kind of upgraded or, or revamped my beauty routine. So, uh, but applying this cleanser at nighttime has been wonderful for my skin, but I find that it's also really helpful for setting up for a restful sleep even, and just kind of like ending the day and almost in a way closing the day with that self-care and self-love as well. Yeah, I love that you brought that up because conventional products are all about using the product as possible, washing your face twice a day, and that's not necessary. Um, yeah. Something else I 
experience when working one-on-one -on -one with others in the detox market is that um, most brand owners actually would prefer if you use their products once a day, at most likely in the evening for most people, if you wear makeup because you want to cleanse it off, you can just use warm yeah. water in the mornings uh, because yeah. the menstrual products are all about stripping your skin and taking mm -hmm. away the beautiful natural oils that are there. And uh, the less I wash my face, just doing it once a night in the evening, um, it has helped my skin tremendously, like so, so, so much. And just stripping down to the, the key essentials of products too. You don't need a 12 step system. <laughs> um, right. Some that works for people and that's fine, but it doesn't have to be this big overwhelming amount of products. You could just have a few key products that work for you. And that's really all you need to be doing. And to set up the ritual for even evening is nice because it's that time of like getting away from screens and blue light yeah. and, you know, having a tea, playing music, whatever, putting on some ambiance, washing your face. Yes. Wash the day off, rest, repair, heal and repeat. I love that. That is so absolutely. true. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Even just like, you know, then taking that time to be mindful of like, how was your day, expressing gratitude, maybe thinking of what the next day brings. And the whole day can be mm. rich. The whole, every day can be set up in a yeah. term ritual. Everything has that beginning and ending, whether it's yeah. your day, whether it's the ritual in itself or whether that's life. So yeah, yeah. just being really conscious of coming full circle with it um, is a really beautiful practice. And yes, please wash your face at night if you wear makeup. <laughs> Because that is like the one thing, because think about it, you're sleeping for so many hours yeah, at night that's right. and your skin isn't, if that's the time where it does repair breathing. and heal. And yeah. if anything, I, that's yeah. like the one thing. Yeah, that's the one thing. Um, I mean, I've been there. I've been guilty. Like if I've gone out, and just, I'm lazy, but I even drunk Jess <laughs> will like make sure that her face is <laughs> not really, really good. good. And she'll like, water on the bedside table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The self-care um, like, aspect to it. Exactly, exactly. And sometimes it's just, if you don't know these things, then yeah, I, I get yeah. it. But once you know, um, it almost hits you at that subconscious level. And yeah. then you're just, yeah, I want to set this intention to feel my absolutely best, grow my absolutely best. And yeah, and being gentle yeah. with yourself when you don't and be like, that's okay too. Yeah, there's definitely been like the nights that I haven't washed my face off and or washed my face, washed my makeup, <laughs> washed my face <laughs> <laughs> and I notice it though in the morning and I think it's because I've cultivated this practice and I've been experiencing the benefits of taking care of my skin before going to bed um, and then waking up and, and having that glow it just it's this automatic boost that I feel um, and it's not even just by looking at myself it's like literally touching my skin it feels healthy um, and I think it's just like my yeah. skin's able to breathe uh, repair, do all the things that it naturally does to feel good. And that experience alone just creates this more momentum to keep going with it. It's just this natural pull to to continue doing the things to care for myself and, and my skin. So That's absolutely so love that. That like knock on effect too, because then yeah. when your outward beauty aligns with your inward beauty and you're just like feeling yes. aligned and glowing and just like feeling better yeah. overall, whatever that looks like for you. Um, right. it, it's just so empowering to feel deeply like mm -hmm. beautiful inward and outward. And that's why Spiral Beauty's like slogan is honoring the beauty within and around because when we appreciate the outward beauty of nature and everything mm. in life and others and see the beauty in others where all mirror reflections. So me honoring the beauty in you is honoring the beauty in me. And it's this beautiful, holistic, empowering way of approaching um, our wellness and our health and mindset and all these beautiful mm -hmm. aspects. Yeah. And creating that beautiful ripple. Oh, I love that so much. Now I'm curious about your, eye pillows that you have mm -hmm. because I saw in your yes. stories not too long ago that you were creating new ones with different I wouldn't say ingredients but different aspects um having like Nova Scotian amethyst in these bags but also beans I was wondering if you could explain a little bit the of the benefits of these bags and and what's involved in that yeah, definitely. I see where you're going with saying nighttime, and that's part of my nighttime ritual. And not even okay. mine anymore, my partner. And most people who have partners, I think if Film's still on here, she can speak to this too. Her partner was like, I need one of these. <laughs> because yeah. when 
get used to having this over your eyes. It just puts you in this space of just like inward healing mm. um, at nighttime. And you don't have to have one of my pillows to feel this way. You could have a, any eye pillow, it's fine. But I, I love the intention of putting the Nova Scotia amethyst crystals to add that extra vibrancy. I have three different kinds, but my amethyst ones are the best sellers. Uh, amethyst okay. is all about intuition, deep dreaming, yeah. opening up the third eye. And um, my partner even the other night was saying, oh, I'm actually seeing colors for the first time. And he's like the least spiritual person. And I was like, oh my gosh, your third eye is opening. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. I was like, oh, wow. uh, very exciting. Um, but yeah, so I created my eye pillows. My, my background is also in costume design. I went to university. Um, film says, yes, my partner keeps stealing mine. So I had fun. Yes, exactly. That's amazing. Um, and oh I my love gosh. That the ripple effect happens, right? And people get jealous. Yeah. <laughs> what the feeling too. <laughs> um, but to go back to the pillow story, yeah, my background is in costume design. So I went to university studying costume design and I don't work in that field anymore, but my, wow. I wanted to honor the aspect of like hands-on sewing and creativity. And then my clients, my Reiki clients, I would sew them little uh, eye pillows with hand embroidered intentions or symbols and they were kind of taking off. So I wanted to think of a way that I could more so like streamline this. And my favorite part of my costume design program was botanical dyeing and uh, live fabrics wow. and honoring plant medicine. So I thought, well, okay, I wanna honor Nova Scotia because to me, I, growing up in Australia, yeah. moving to Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia is my home. I love it here. I want to really bring something community-based, um, whether you live here or not. So there's people mm -hmm. across Canada who are like, oh, I want a piece of Nova Scotia at home, so they buy Definitely. it. Um, but yeah, so I use the Nova Scotia wild blueberries, high in antioxidants, beautiful yeah. purple color to dye the um, amethyst ones. Okay, we'll see you later, Somerville. Thank you, Laura. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, so I used the, the Nova Scotia wild blueberries to dye the, the linen fabric. And then I filled the pillows. The inner pillow is made with Nova Scotia uh, amethyst off of Scotts Bay. So it's off the ocean. Wow. So you have an energy. Um, lavender, dried lavender buds that are grown by my family. We like hand um, separate all the buds and everything. So yeah. I'm sneezing sometimes. But <laughs> wow. it's a beautiful experience. Uh, it, you have that whole like aromatherapy aspect yeah. too because I also want to bring in Absolutely. all the senses so you have the sight you have the color you have the purple you have the smell with a lavender and then you yeah. know smell and taste can kind of go in the same um sound you could play music or you can hear when you touch it that's what I was thinking yeah um, the bag yeah so you're bringing like this holistic approach to your inward beauty as well yeah. and I have mung beans and flax seeds so the flax seeds have a natural oil so if you want to put it in the fridge it retains its coolness and then the wow. mung beans add extra weight so it can stimulate your vagus nerve which brings in your whole relaxation system so if you're having a headache um, if you just want to tap into your deeper meditation practices just deeply really re relax your body literally just lay it over your eyes and you just like you feel different. Mm -hmm. You feel your body yeah. shift into the state. Yeah. So, wow. and I'm talking, but yeah. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. I think it sounds absolutely delightful. I've used a few of the eye pillows during um, like sound baths when I used to attend to them locally here with um, experts around here, the other healing experts. And uh, it just, I find it's like help is it sensory deprivation that they call they call this yeah it's similar to like you know the floating beds and that when the lights go out, like when you're able to just rest and I I say that as well because in our rooms um having our rooms completely dark is ideal for sleep uh to have the most restful sleep and I think yeah it's because of that you're you're kind of walking that sensory which just then allows you that opportunity to go more inward and have that deeper rest. So I think that these pillows sound absolutely divine. Um, so if you just recently restocked, is that? <laughs> restocked with them? Yeah. Uh, I just did a, a big order yesterday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of hard to keep up with the demand. I probably need to yeah. like outsource somebody. <laughs> if they're really, really okay. popular, it's great. I'm very grateful, but I only have some yeah. of them. Um, so absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Yesterday was a big day for big orders again. Yeah. I got shipped out, which is lovely. Um, and the other ones I offer are rose and rose quartz. So to oh, amplify wow. the rose petals, I add a drop of 100% Bulgarian 
rose oil just wow. to because I that I love rose and that that's yeah. my favorite. It's the highest quality rose you can yeah. get. Um, yeah. It's like a dollar a drop, so like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just the right amount. <laughs> yes. Um, and then my other one, because not everybody um, likes the very floral scents, I use yarrow, which is such an incredible, powerful, um, right. ancient healer. So I do yarrow with smoky quartz, and the smoky quartz is sourced wow. locally here too and sustainably. And yeah. this one has more of like a spicy chamomile scent, and mm -hmm. uh, it's like a peachy color. So I have like three different colors for three different meanings. My intention for this was to have a lower chakra, a heart chakra, and an upper chakra. So um, depending on where you might need healing to. And then I can also offer like hand embroidery if you want that extra, you know, boost of intention as well. Wow. Absolutely. Oh, that sounds so beautiful. My husband's recently really gravitated towards the smoky quartz. So I'm thinking like, as, and it doesn't necessarily be have to, you know, have to be a male perspective, but that, you know, masculine. it's less, well, yeah, it's more manly or, you know, it's less florally and, and more masculine opportunity to really connect with um, this and Father's Day is coming up. So I'm like, hmm, this sounds really, really nice. <laughs> yeah. And that was my intention too. And I like to say more in like masculine and feminine energies because yes. there are a lot of females who are you know, identify with being more of a masculine energy type. Yeah. So to having an offering that is more of a masculine yeah. um, aspect and also speaking energetically, our lower chakras are more about masculine and our upper chakras right. are more about feminine. So it's approaching it more from that like energetic yeah. standpoint as well. Absolutely. Oh, it's so yeah. beautiful. Now, before we wrap up, I just wanted to open the floor and give you an opportunity to share anything new that you have going on how those that are tuning in for for this conversation live and for the replay, um, how they can connect with you and, and work with you. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Um, yeah, cool. there's lots of things going on this yeah. year. I've launched my online Reiki courses. So if anybody is interested in learning how to self-heal through hands using universal life force energy, um, it's just such a beautiful practice, especially now. Um, just working on our self-care and self-love. And there's a beautiful uh, community on Facebook now where we all like hang out and chat and express ideas. Whoever, whoever joins those courses has access to that community as well. And one other thing which I haven't even announced to anyone yet that I will announce here is that I, okay, so in what year was it? 2017, I discovered human design. Are you familiar with Human design? I'm new to human design. New. Okay. I I am I'm working through the program or learning my human design and my husband as well uh, at the moment. So this is really exciting. <laughs> yeah. So I'd love to chat more with you about this. And I've been offering free readings yeah. for like all my community for such a long time, just like yeah. my general readings. Sure. Um, and this is something that I'm working on offering soon in like. Uh, an actual offering that I can have for my community, whether that is through like a little booklet or through actual like live readings one on one with you. Um, because human design and being somebody who works with energy, uh, it's something that really, really, really helped me along my path mm -hmm. and covering out um, what even spiral beauty is looking like today. And it was so helpful for me. And I want to spread that with others as well, because when you truly know your, your energy type and whose energies you're absorbing and what energies you're solid in, it really helps you along your path and your journey. And so that's something that I'm working on um, offering behind the scenes as well as my other Reiki courses and all the other things. <laughs> that is so amazing. And that sounds incredible. I know that I'm, I'm sure that the readings have been incredibly valuable for yourself and those that you've provided for, for clients in the community. And so I, I wish you all the best at navigating this next offering. It, oh, it's so beautiful. I I know because I I am like I love learning about astrology. I love learning about human design. I love learning about all the different intricate, like even the Myers Briggs test, like all the different intricacies of just really further understanding myself. And because I find that it's so, it, it makes it really easy to kind of accept and honor and embrace where you're at and your position and perspective in this world and even what your purpose is and how you serve others and how you rest and 
you know, just kind of accepting those parts of yourself. And it just creates this beautiful ripple effect for others as well to understanding themselves, um, providing that acceptance and self love as well. And I mean, self love and, and love is, in, in my opinion, what heals the world. So when we're able to understand ourselves and accept ourselves, we can just show up fully and with that radiance and the glow and, and really be there as your, your best, best self, I don't know, I, yourself. I guess. That's exactly it. Love is the highest vibration. And the more deeply yeah. we love and go on with ourselves, the more deeply we can love and hold space for others. And yeah, that's really bringing full circle what Spiral Beauty is about too, is honoring the beauty both when, within and around. So yeah. it's really coming at it with this holistic approach, but we have to deeply do the work. And uh, yeah, we can go very deep. The deeper <laughs> we go, the more profound and, and impactful right. our lives can be the whole wow. space for others too. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here, Jess. It has been an absolute joy. You're just such a bright light and, and beacon for others to, to feel their best self too. And so I really appreciate you taking some time today. Because um, I know your schedule is busy with with lots going on, so I really appreciate you taking this time to connect and and share more about Spiral Beauty here on Feng Shui Talks with me and in my little corner of the world. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love this. I'm so grateful for you having me here, and I love watching your your talks. I think you're such a great speaker and such a great advocate yeah. for uh, healing the energy in the space of where you live, which is so important. So yeah. such important work. So thank you for everything that you do. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone who's joined us live. We've had so many people coming in and joining the conversation. If you're catching the replay, feel free to comment in uh, this post and we'll answer questions and reply to you as well. So thank you so much for being here and part of the conversation as well with us. And have a wonderful Wednesday. Thank Bye, you. Guys. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.